Hello, welcome to Andrew Lavery Show, where we talk about investing in the stock market and where we talk about using the stock market so we can build wealth and all become self-made millionaires. In this video, we're going to take a look at Apple and we're going to see what would have happened if we had started investing in Apple back in January of 1990, invested in them regularly every month and took the dividends that Apple paid us, reinvested them back into the company. How much would we be collecting in dividends today? And how much would all those shares be worth today? We're going to take a look at that here in this video. Before we move on, I want to encourage everyone to hit that like button, hit subscribe button and notification bell. I post new videos all the time. All right. So one thing we want to point out here first is that keep in mind there have been four stock splits right here. Uh, two two for ones, one seven for one, and one four for one stock split. And those have been taken into account in all these calculations. That's why you're seeing share prices so insanely low here in these early years, 30 cents, 50 cents, 58 cents, and so on. And that's why you're seeing dividends that are so low as well, because the share splits have been taken into account. So just keep that in mind. That's why you're seeing very low numbers there. So we're going to start off with $50 a month and work our way up to $1,000 and see just how much would we have made with all those different dollar amounts so between 50 and 1,000, how much would we have made in dividends? How much would we be collecting in dividends today? What would the shares be worth in Apple today? We're, so we're gonna see all those, uh, we're gonna see those numbers for all these different monthly investment amounts. So I'm gonna start off with $50 and then I'm gonna quickly explain how all this is set up here, how the calculations are set up. So $50 a month, that's total of $600 a year. So the way this is set up is you are investing once, at, once a year, January 1st, uh, excuse me, every January 1st, so January 1st, 1990, January 1st, 1991. Now, I know the market's not open on January 1st because it's New Year's Day, but just go with me here. So just the beginning of January of 1990, 1991, and so on. So all throughout 1989, you saved up $50 a month. You had $600 total. Beginning of January 1990, you bought 600 shares, which when you account for all the share splits would have turned into 2,000 shares. Your portfolio, of course, is worth $600 because you just bought $600 worth of shares. That's what you have been collecting uh, about a half a penny per share in dividends. And you would have been paid a total of $8.20 in dividends that year. Fast forward to 1991. You again saved up $50 a month or $600 throughout the whole year. So you bought another $600 worth of shares in 1991, January 1991. Plus, you reinvested your $8.20 right here. That's coming from over here in column H. And now you have a total of 3,216 shares when you account for all the share splits. And you would have been paid a total of $14.15 that year in dividends. And that process just repeats all the way down the line where you're buying shares once a year in early January of, uh, of, a, of each year, all the way up to 2021. So with $50 a month, $600 a year, you invested a total of $18,600. That's just your monthly investment amount. That's not including reinvested dividends. Your total portfolio value is about $4.5 million. You have just about 30, 34,500 shares. Your total annual dividends, if you were to retire right, you know, at the end, or excuse me, in 2021, you would have collected $29,841.68 in dividends. So that would be your yearly dividend income not factoring in any future dividend increases. And the total dividends paid would have been almost $194,000. So, but one thing I just wanna point out here, and I already mentioned it, but $50 a month, now granted $50 a month starting in, in uh, uh, 1990 is not the same as $50 a month today. Obviously $50 a month in 1990, probably been over $100 um, you know, in, uh, when you adjust for inflation. But $50 a month, and now you have a portfolio value of $4.5 million. You're a million, you would have been a millionaire had you invested in Apple just $50 a month. A millionaire almost about four and a half times over. So that is just absolutely phenomenal. Imagine if you held on for just one more year in 2022, things would have looked probably would have looked even better for you. But so you can see there, 20 almost $30,000 a year in annual dividends. Portfolio value about $4.5 million is what you would have had. Let's just see here. Let's just bump this up to $100. And now we have a portfolio value of about $9.1 million, almost 69,000 shares and almost $60,000 in dividends. And you would have been paid a total of about $388,000 in dividends throughout all these years. This would be a 31 year period. Um, granted, you reinvested almost all those dividends minus the last year where you, uh, where you decided to retire and start living off your dividends. But um, so you didn't reinvest this $59,683 but you reinvested everything else that you were paid. 
um, over three hundred thousand dollars worth of dividends you reinvest in. Let's bump this up to two fifty, and let's see here. You would have a portfolio value today of about twenty-two point seven million dollars, almost one hundred seventy-three thousand shares, about one hundred forty-nine thousand dollars a year in dividends you would be collecting, and you have been paid almost a million dollars worth of dividends throughout the whole time. Now, keep one thing I forgot to point out here a little earlier is keep in mind that in this massive period right here, starting in 1996, going all the way to 2011, uh, there was no dividends paid. Apple fell on hard times, and there was a decent stretch of years there in a row, consecutive years in a row, where they were, they were having a difficult time and could not afford to pay a dividend. So they stopped paying their dividend in 1996. They started in 2012. It was about halfway through the year in 2012 that they started paying a dividend and then have been every year there since. So keep in mind that you are collecting, you know, with the 250 a month, you're still collecting 150,000, almost $150,000 a year in dividends, despite the fact that you had this long period right here where there were no dividends paid. So I think that is truly amazing and nearly a million dollars collected in dividends, despite you had over a decade of no dividends paid. All right here. So let's just bump this up here. We'll go 400. And now you got about $36.5 million worth of uh, shares in Apple. Scroll all the way down so you can see the last row. Total shares is about 276,000 shares total. And about 238,700 worth in dip worth the um, uh, annual dividends every year coming into you. And you would have been paid a total of about $1.5 million in dividends throughout the entire period. Um, just and again with a huge gap here in dividends, still breaking well over a million dollars. Uh, let's see, let's bump this up to we'll go to 750. And uh, just massive, I mean, huge, huge number here 68, we'll call it 68.3 million dollars, well over half a million shares, pushing a half a million dollars in annual dividend income is what you'd be collecting and paid nearly $3 million in dividends total throughout this whole time. And we'll wrap it up here at $1,000. So with $1,000, you would have invested a total of $372,000 throughout this entire 31 year period. And that's just your $1,000 a month or $12,000 a year. And you would now have a portfolio value of just over $91 million almost 700,000 shares, well over a half a million dollars in annual dividends, almost $600,000 in annual dividends, and about $3.9 million worth of dividends paid you in total. I mean, wow, huge, huge numbers. Um, this really goes to show, I mean, even if you're just doing $100 a month, um, you know, I can afford $100 a month. That would have been more, obviously, back then in 1990, so probably would have been more like two, two fifty, maybe, somewhere around there back in 1990, but still, um, I can certainly afford $250 now. I could have afforded the equivalent of $250 back in 1990 if I was old enough. I was only eight years old back in 1990. But um, had I been an adult in 1990, I certainly probably could have afforded um, the equivalent of $250 back then. And it, it would have just paid off immensely. Uh, a portfolio value of $9.1 million. I mean, it's just truly remarkable. If you can pick the right company, if you can pick good, well-managed companies, and, it, and there was a big time period. Now, I do have to admit, there was a big time period here where it didn't look like uh, Apple was a well-managed company. They fell on hard times for sure. They brought back Steve Jobs sometime in this period. I'm not sure what year that was that he came back. And the company definitely did a big U-turn and became the powerhouse that it is. So it was definitely a, a rise, a fall, and a rise again here of Apple. But, um, you know, it certainly would have paid off tremendously for you had you just continued to invest that $100 a month um, even though you weren't getting dividends, continue to invest $100 a month, accumulate more and more shares. And then when they finally started paying dividends, your first dividend payment after almost over a decade would have been over $11,000. Um, that certainly would have been a nice surprise. And that wasn't even a full year worth of dividends because they started halfway through 2012 when they started paying dividends again. Um, so that was, certainly would have been a wonderful surprise after so many years of not collecting dividends. Um, but if you can pick the right company to invest in, good, strong, well-managed companies, not as, not even necessarily dividend-paying companies. They don't have to be dividend-paying companies, but good, well-managed companies, uh, you, the sky is the limit. And as long as they stay good, well-managed companies, too, that's the key. If you don't know how to pick a company to invest in, not sure how to analyze the stock, 
Um, down below in the description are links to my more recent stock analysis videos where I show you how I analyze the company. If you feel like you need a little help and a little guidance on how to do it, you can see how I do it. See if it makes sense. See if you like it. If you don't, you don't have to do it. Um, but that's just what I like to just, you know, what, what, you, what, what you'll see in those videos, just what I like to do, what websites I go to, what numbers I'm looking for. So I break it all down and what I do in those videos. So feel free to check those out if you feel like you need a little help. But if you can pick a good, well-managed company, um, even like two, three, four companies, hold on to them for a long period of time, do a buy and hold strategy and just be patient. You know, numbers like this could be in your future and it could be in my future too. It could be in all of our futures. We just have to be patient and pick a good company. So, um, I hope this is inspiring. I hope this encourages you to get out there and invest. It certainly always encourages me to get out there and stay invested. I'm already invested, but to stay invested in the stock market. Um, this always encourages me. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Hit that like button, hit subscribe button, and notification bell. I post new videos all the time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.